Welcome back to Hometown TCG, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Josh. My name is John. And we are back with our budget blitz deck series that we got from you guys. You guys blew up our comments section and we heard you. We're building budget competitive blitz decks for all of the Welcome to Wraith heroes. And today we're talking Bravo, but before we go any farther, we hit our 500 subscriber goal and we are doing a live stream to celebrate. Details in a future video to let you guys know when it's gonna be next week. We're excited. Racing to 750, but let's talk Bravo today. That's right. So when we're building this deck, we're looking to make it a budget deck, but it's got to be competitively viable. So yes. we're not setting a monetary value that we have to hit. We have to hit 50. No, because if it takes 60, we're going to do that to make this deck as strong as possible. Right. It's important that this deck is strong within its own pool. So all four of these decks can play together, but also important that you can take it to your armory event. You can take home some wins and maybe take down the whole thing. So this specific one is going to run you at $60.18 on TCG Play. So just over 60 bucks. That's not bad. Not bad. And uh, let's let's look right into it. So I love this deck personally, uh, but what do you think it does best? So I think one of the things that this deck does best, outside of defend, obviously, right? Our Guardian always defends very well, but it plays the grind game so well. It's got such efficient weapon attacks. It grinds out so well. But what doesn't it do well? Yeah, it does not put out offensive pressure consistently. So you may look at it and be like, wow, these are big attacks, but don't fall into the trap of thinking that you can consistently output tons of damage because you're only putting out one attack a turn. Spoiler alert, there's a lot of attacks in this deck. Not a lot of them are useful and we're gonna get into why, but let's talk about what we're gonna need to do to win. And what we said we do well, right, is we grind out with our weapon while we're defending and we need a couple things to do that. Yeah, so uh, the weapon itself can hit for four or six damage. So if we can get it to do six damage, that's even better. So you want to be able to do something into it. Uh, for instance, you would have Blessing of Deliverance. That can give you the, uh, the life gain and a free card and then hit right into a six. That's amazing. What's what even better? Yeah, we got some Zealous Monarch Spice. belting into your weapon. Mm -hmm. Guys, pitch one of those attacks that we're advising you not to use. Get that go again on Zealous Belting. Pitch another blue and swing a Nothos. Four, six, mm -hmm. three cards, 11 damage. That's fantastic DPC. That's efficient DPC right there. We love to see that here. And again, alongside those efficient weapon attacks, we're going to need to defend. And that's where our... Monarch Spice in the equipment slot slides in, mm -hmm. and that is our Iron Hide equipment. Now, some of us are going to look at this and say, why? Go ahead and tell them why. Yeah, well, first of all, you have uh, the ability to put them out and pitch a single card because you have so many blues in block six. So one card for six is amazing. But what we found is that if you're going against an attack reaction deck like Dorinthia, you can put out the Iron Hide equipment and you don't have to actually use it. And if you don't use it, it doesn't destroy it because right Iron Hide actually reads when you defend with Iron Hide, whatever, you may pay a resource. If you do, it gains plus two and destroy it when the chain closes. You have the option to put that Iron Hide equipment in harm's way. Your opponent doesn't buff that attack. You say, I'm going to save this bad boy for later. What's so cool is Dorinthia tries to play the mind game, but now you can play the mind game on defense. Exactly. That's fantastic. Combine that with some of our other defense reactions, uh, staunch response, unmovables. You've got a deck that can defend out of nowhere. That's right. It's huge right there. Uh, so, so now we're looking at closing out the game. Right. So we've grinded and theoretically with our efficient weapon, right? We've probably got to chipped away some health points. We're grinding mm -hmm. our opponents mm -hmm. down. Decks are getting low. We got to close this thing. How are we closing this game? Okay, so we have Crippling Crush. Yes, that's, it that's is the big one. You got to include it. Uh, just amazing efficiency on that deck. Amazing or on that attack. Amazing yes. power. Exactly. And you're um, going to dominate it using Bravo's power. Yes. And maybe you switch in Goliath Gauntlets as well. Okay. So you do have that choice. Uh, but you're going to dominate that, hit them, and hopefully close out the game. Exactly. Now, are there any other attacks? Now, there are several other attacks, and we touched on this earlier, but we warn you guys, don't get baited into playing these attacks. I can't stress that no. enough. Guys, they're in the decks. They're blues. They cost more than three. They have the oppor opportunity to turn on a Nothos, but other than that, 
They're traps. The blues should only be used as attacks in very specific circumstances. One of them would be the first turn of the game to try to push through damage. That's a good opportunity to. Uh, one of them could be if you know your opponent has no armor or no defense reactions left to close out the game with a dominated attack. Exactly, and possibly even pummel that attack towards right. the end of the game. So that might be the, the only other way is if you have a pummel and you know that it can get good efficiency off the hit effect. All right, so we definitely want to make this into a grind game. We want to try to close out this game out with a big attack, and that kind of brings us into those are our ways that we want to win. As you're playing this deck with your friends at your armor, event you want to keep those things in mind and a couple of other pointers that we use to win with this deck is it's okay to go first with this deck yes so uh we talked about in dorinthia you want to go second 100 but with bravo because you have things you can do on your first turn it's worth it a lot of times you can dominate uh is a huge one to push through some damage or even bigger is you can set out one of your auras. So you got uh, Showtime or uh, what's it called? Uh, Towering Titan. Towering Titan, duh. Huge, huge first turn play. That can win you the game just by laying that out first turn. That absolutely can win you the game. So that does make this deck viable to go first. But remember, if you're going to pick to go first, keep that in mind, make sure you have a reason. And that takes us to the second point we want to use to make sure we stick to to win this deck, win with this deck, and that's commit to the grind, guys. Don't get halfway through the game and change your strategy. Don't get halfway through the game and start trying to play some of these bait blue attacks. You're committed to this grind. You're going all the way. You're That's keeping right. your health high. You're chipping your opponents low. Exactly, you're going block, 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 swing your hammer, or block, block, and swing your hammer for six. And it's, it's efficient for one card because most cards block for three, but you're doing four. So you're going to chip them in block, chip them in block all game long, all game long. And the final point that you want to look out is to try to wear out that equipment before you try to close mm -hmm. the game. If you leave your opponent with a lot of available block, when you go to close out, you could find that blowing back in your face. You could take some extra damage that you don't need to take. Yeah, you got to get the Dominate through, kill the equipment, finish them off. That's how Bravo does it. That's how Bravo works. And all in all, guys, we are huge fans of this deck. you got a lot of options with a way to play. It's fun. You build your skills when you kind of get into that grindy game, right? Yeah, it, it takes some skill and some patience. And it's something you learn over time, especially learning how your opponent attacks. That teaches you how to defend. So it's a nice one uh, to just get experience with and get a lot of time with. And you'll have fun with it. Guys, this has been a blast. We are big fans of this deck. Again, before we let you go, 500 subscriber live stream coming next week. Check us out. Thank you so much. We're racing to 750. And until next time, my name is Josh. My name is John. And we'll see you around.